Okay, today we're going to do a test just to make sure that what I got from IC Go 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 is actually a an active balancer. In theory, uh, when cell group two is uh, low and starts charging, my clamp meter should show more than 0.97 amps transferring. So I'm going to turn on the balance current on the uh, active balancer and as soon as that red number starts flashing, which means it's presumably charging cell group 2, then we should see an increase in the amps going to that cell group on the clamp meter, which is clamped on the cell group 2 bus. So here we go. There. Yes. There it is. So it's charging uh, close to 5 amps. Actually, four amps. There was a, an amp on the bus already just from the interaction between the cells, and now. Well, now we're going to. We're charging a different cell group. Cell group six is low, so it's being charged. Great. So, um, I just want to talk a little bit more about uh, strategies I'm using to keep my uh, battery balanced which is uh this is a 14 pack byd uh off-grid completely off-grid battery configured for 48 volts so um <clears throat> when i first started hooking up pairs of uh these batteries um i had some issues with the cells getting significantly out of balance i couldn't really charge or discharge to the full capacity because the uh, cell voltage just would go so out of whack when it got to the high end and the low end of the ranges. Um, so the thing that I did to address that, of course, is uh, I paralleled all the cells. <clears throat> so what I do is I have a... The vertical wires here are a bus that connects all the cells together into a cell group. So each BYD pack has, let me show you here, each BYD pack has a uh, terminal block, and these black wires come in from the cells on this pack on the sides, of course. They're uh, riveted with carp co copper rivets, and uh, so the uh, cells come in here from the BYD pack, and then the color-coded wires go out to the uh, main vertical bus. This is 10 AWG. It connects all of the uh, different um, terminal blocks together and allows the cells to transfer energy between each other as they require. So for instance, if a cell in this battery is a little low, the energy from its neighbors who are higher will automatically transfer into there just because of the voltage difference. And uh, so, and then the interesting thing that I found that kind of illustrates how this whole system works is um, if you take a multimeter and put the negative probe here, which is the main negative of this pack, and the positive probe here, you'll get the voltage of the first cell. If you put the negative probe of your multimeter here and your positive here, you'll get the voltage of the second cell. Here and here, third. Here and here, fourth. So you'll get the base voltage of the fourth cell by putting your probes here. And uh, so once I found that, it was easy to uh, parallel the cells. And in each tower. So what I do is I have two towers. I have a right tower and a left tower. And each one of these towers are connected to each other parallel, vertically. This, this whole tower is connected vertically, parallel. Same here. And then the uh, two towers are connected serial to create 48 volts for our outback inverter. So, um, this tower connects to this tower in a serial manner, positive to negative, and then main negative over here, 
main positive over here. So with that, I, what I found is the cells within each tower were staying very well balanced, but the two towers were getting out of balance with each other. For instance, this entire tower would go to say 26.8 volts when this tower was still at 26.3. Uh, and that happened mostly during charging and, and again at the higher and lower end, ends of the ranges. So the first thing I did is um, I installed a shared serial bus bar. So this is just a copper pipe that connects all of the serial connections between the two towers together. You know, normally you just have these two cables connect each other to make a serial connection to give you 48 volts. But I found that if I put this uh, serial bus bar between the two towers, that the uh, energy transferred somewhat more efficiently and that helped to keep the two towers balanced while it did not completely solve the problem. Um, so I, I went looking for another solution and what I found is an active balancer on eBay from eBay store IC Go Go Go. And here is the unit here. So the first part is a little breakout board with pins on it to connect to uh, each cell, or in my case, I connect to each cell group or cell bus. So I've got it configured as 16S active balancer. And uh, so, Cell one group is over here on the right tower. Cell one through eight is over here on the right tower. And nine through 16 cell group or cell bus is on the left tower. And uh, I just have it connected with these um, radio control model airplane connectors to each bus. And uh, once I did that and turned on the uh, Power. And then up above, of course, you can see the main control unit, and that has a Bluetooth connection. And uh, let's see, here's the interface to the Bluetooth connection on the on the uh, active balancer. So you can see it gives your cell wire resistance down here, and I found that's more just the resistance of the wire buses rather than the internal cell voltages of any sort or any cell resistance of any sort and then up here of course you have the cells voltage and the blue cell group is the high cell group and the red is the low and uh, when the blue is flashing it's actually absorbing energy from that blue storing it apparently in an ultra capacitor on the unit it says and then when the red is flashing, it's transferring that ultra capacitor stored energy to the low, the low red cell. Um, I have the balance current set to four and a half amps right now. You can see my delta is 0 0.006. That's the average difference between all the cell groups. It normally hovers around 0 0.004, but in order to uh, make a, a video today, I turned off the balancing for about 24 hours. So the cells could get a little bit out of balance and the most they got out of balance was 0 0.006 so but you know at least I was able to uh, make the video and see that it is an, indeed an active balancer there's also a uh, settings screen here cell count in my case 16s um, you can set the trigger voltage or the delta where the balancing actually starts in this case it's 0 0.005, which is the lowest setting. Uh, the max current is 4.5 amps for balancing. There's a power off function, so the uh, balancing will stop at 2.5 volts per cell. And uh, this volt calibration field is for, uh, you just take a uh, accurate multimeter, digital multimeter, take a reading on the battery, and then input that voltage reading in here, and that allows the uh, active balancer to configure itself to the proper battery voltage. So I've got to say this has been working fabulously. I mean, it usually, it, it, it only uh, balances probably 20% of the time now. The rest of the time it's below the trigger voltage and, uh, you know, it's hovering around 0 0.004. <laughs> 
cell difference or delta. So I'm extremely happy. I can't wait to do a, a capacity test on this, and um, I should be doing that in the next few weeks, and I'll post the results on that. But I expect the uh, capacity to be, you know, significantly improved over the individual pack capacity just because um, it seems to be balancing the current so well between the cells. I'll be able to start from a high place where I know all the cells are fully charged and I'll discharge down to a low place where I know all the cells are equally discharged and I think I'll get a real accurate reading of the capacity of the battery system. But again, I got to say this system is working fabulously well. And uh, I also want to add that um, I have no plans to add a BMS to this system just because uh, the inverter functions perfectly well as a uh, discharge disconnect. So when the overall pack voltage gets low enough, the uh, inverter just shuts off. And since the cells are very well balanced, I don't have to worry about one cell getting out of whack as, as the whole pack discharges. Um, I rely on the active balancer to keep everything balanced. And uh, then my charge controller only charges up to a certain voltage that's not damaging and uh, it takes care of the charging. And again, the active or the charging disconnect, you know, it doesn't allow it to overcharge. And the active balancer makes sure that none of the cells get out of whack when it's at the high end or at the low end of the uh, range. So I think a BMS at this point would just add complexity and uh, failure modes. And I plan to just keep running this way and, and be very happy. So anyway, that's my system. More updates to follow. Signing off.